Hi, today's problem is, in 1981, a stray black cat with unusual rounded curled black ears was adopted by a family in California. Hundreds of descendants of the cat have since been born, and a cat fencers hope to develop the curled cat into a show breed. Suppose you owned the first curled cat and wanted to develop a true breeding variety. How would you determine whether the curl allele is dominant or recessive? How would you select a true breeding cats? And how would you know uh, they are true breeding? And uh, here is my explanation. So first uh, question is how would you determine whether the curl allele is dominant or recessive? And um, so far we don't know, so we uh, have to make two hypotheses and the first one would be that the trait is recessive and in order uh, to show up for a recessive trait uh, this particular cat, unusual cat, have to have two recessive alleles or it just wouldn't be uh, show up uh, as phenotype so we have to suggest that this cat has um, two recessive alleles, so let it be small a, small a, and uh, when we cross such a uh, cat with another cat, that would be normal, and uh, in this case normal would be dominant, so this is going to be capital A and capital A, so in such situation we expect that uh, all the progeny would be heterozygous, so capital A small a, capital A small a, capital A small a, and capital A small a. So as you see, uh, all the progeny wouldn't show this trait because uh, they got one normal allele from the uh, normal parent and this would be dominant allele over the recessive, so uh, if uh, this cat has uh, recessive allele or two recessive alleles, that means that when we cross with uh, another normal cat for this uh, trait, all 100% of the progeny uh, would be normal. So. Uh, the next question is, uh, so the, the second hypothesis would be, uh, is um, what if this is a dominant trait? So let's uh, assume that this is dominant trait, so uh, our cat would be uh, most likely heterozygous, so capital A and small a, and you may also ask why heterozygous, why it cannot be homozygous dominant? And uh, the answer would be because this is very unusual that mutation would happen, dominant mutation would happen uh, simultaneously for both genes. Uh, this is very highly unlikely. And uh, in the first example here, this would be uh, not a mutation in uh, this particular cat, but probably there were accumulation of mutations in the parents, so this particular cat may get one recessive allele from one uh, parent and another one from another parent. But with dominant um, trait, this most likely that this arise de novo in this particular cat, so uh, due to mutation. So uh, the other normal cat uh, would uh, with normal trait would be homozygous recessive for this trait and uh, when we cross such two parents we expect that uh, uh, we are going to get capital A small a in 50% of the progeny and 50% uh, of the progeny would be small a small a so as you see 50% here would be normal phenotype and uh, we also expect that 50% would show the same phenotype as uh, uh, one of the parents 
that show up this uh, new trade. So this is would be uh, 50 to 50 percent ratio in the progeny. So this is how we would know that this is dominant uh, trade. And uh, second question is uh, how would you select for true breeding cats? And uh, this is also very easy in the first scenario that this is uh, recessive trade, homozygous recessive. Uh, everything we have to do, we just have to uh, cross all this F1 generation among each other and uh, in the F2 generation we are going to get, as you see, uh, capital A small a, we cross with capital A small a and uh, this is going to be normal phenotype if it is uh, recessive uh, allele so this is going to be ratio as you see capital A capital A here so this is going to be normal phenotype capital A small a here also would be heterozygous but normal phenotype and capital A small a here also uh, normal phenotype and here we would see uh, het heterozygous recessive phenotype that would be uh, the uh, cat of our interest with rounded ears so we would have ratio in F2 generation as uh, 3 to 1 so 75% would show normal phenotype and 25% would show uh, the phenotype of our interest and this is going to be true breeding cats because uh, both alleles would be uh, homozygous uh, recessive and uh, so this would be easier in this scenario and if we would have uh, a cat uh, here as uh, when we have a dominant trait as you see, 50% uh, of the progeny would show up uh, the same um, uh, genotype and the same phenotype. But when we cross uh, such two parents, I can use the same example, two heterozygous parents would produce, uh, phenotypically this would be, uh, in this case, uh, uh, the same as parent here. So with rounded ears, this one also would have uh, round ears. But as you see, uh, ratio would be 75 to 25. So one would be uh, normal and 3 out of 4 or 75% would uh, have the same trait as father. But only one out of this three would be a true breeding. Uh, that also means that both alleles would be uh, dominant and such a cat would al always um, uh, transfer one of the uh, alleles to uh, progeny and uh, in this case we uh, have to test uh, this three genotypes in order to find which one is true breeding and this is also very easy to do so imagine uh, that we in turn do uh, a test crossing and what is a test crossing is this is when we uh, this unknown uh, we know phenotypes here but we don't know genotype because this genotype and this genotype phenotypically would look the same as this homozygous dominant and true breeding. So how we would find this uh, genotype um, because phenotype would be the same as this one. And this is very easy. We just have to cross 
each one in turn with this homozygous uh, recessive cat. So, for example, when we have uh, one parent that is uh, heterozygous and another one that is homozygous recessive, we are going to see this picture. So, 50% uh, of the progeny would be normal and 50% would be um, uh, would show up uh, the same phenotype as we are looking for and uh, that means that this is two heterozygous genotypes and when we cross uh, this homozygous recessive genotype with uh, this genotype uh, all the progeny as on this picture would show up this uh, particular uh, phenotype so we would know that uh, this particular cat is um, homozygous dominant. So this is true breeding. So in order to find if uh, one of these three um, genotypes, of course we would we don't know the genotypes. We all these three cats uh, would look the same for us. But when we cross uh, all of them with homozygous recessive uh, we would see a different picture so when we cross heterozygous with homozygous we would have this picture and when we cross uh, homozygous recessive with uh, homozygous dominant we would see this picture this is how we would know that this is uh, true breeding so I also answered the last question how would you know uh, they are true breeding? And now I hope if you would find any uh, such new trait in cat or dog or uh, even in um, plants, you would know how to fix such a trait and make a true breeding plant or animal. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Goodbye.